Mmm, who doesn't like a nice big plate of French toast? Nice firm bread soaked in eggs with milk, uh, maybe uh, garnished with a little bit of fresh fruit, some cinnamon, and slathered over the top with maple syrup. Have you ever wondered where this dish came from? What genius mind created it? And who throughout history savored this delectable dish? Well, that's what we're going to look at today in 18th Century Cooking with James Townsend and Son. Wrapping up our second series of 18th century cooking with James Townsend and Son. Most recently, we've been looking at 18th century breads, and we thought it would be appropriate to conclude this series with a little sweet treat made with bread. The earliest recipe for French toast can be found in the Apicius. It's a 4th and 5th century collection of Roman recipes. The dish is simply titled A Sweet Treat, and the translation reads thus. Break a slice of fine white bread, crust removed, into rather large pieces. Soak in milk and beaten eggs. Fry in oil, cover in honey, and serve. Bread was known as a staff of life. It was a dietary pillar. But what does one do when one's bread goes stale? In an old English cookbook from about 1430, we find a recipe for bread that's uh, sliced, dipped in eggs, fried in butter, and then sprinkled with a little bit of sugar. The name of this recipe was pan perdu, a French word that means lost bread or wasted bread, suggesting that this recipe was meant to use up stale bread. Karen Hess, who transcribed Martha Washington's Book of Cookery, has this to say in a recipe after pan perdu. It says, the English early took to pan perdu and made it their own. It was rarely omitted from a cookbook, usually listed under made dishes. Made dishes are any dish that amuses the cook or shows off her skill. Let's make French toast, or pan perdu, in a true 18th century fashion. We're going to start off with a nice enriched bread. Uh, the no-knead French bread like we made in our last episode would be perfect. If you want to use a more modern bread, you can use a challah bread or a brioche. Any firm bread will do. We've cut the crust off this and we've let it set out overnight. So we're starting off with a nice stale bread. I'm going to start off here with about eight egg yolks. To that, I'm going to add about a cup of uh, cream. And I'm also going to add some wine, some uh, sack here. We're going to use about a quarter of a cup. Now I'm going to add about two tablespoons of sugar. And finally, I'm going to scrape in a little bit of nutmeg. And we'll whisk this all together. Now let's take our individual bread pieces and put them in the batter. I'm going to let these set for maybe 15 minutes or up to an hour to get this a real good chance to soak in. It really depends on how stale your bread is. While these toasts are steeping, I'm going to go ahead and start on our sauce because we want to have the sauce ready to put on it as soon as they're cooked. We're going to start off with about four tablespoons of butter and then once that's melted, let's add in about two tablespoons of sack. And after the sack, we're going to add about a tablespoon of sugar. Now you want to whisk this all together. And you want it to get nice and warm, but we're really not cooking it. We're just really mixing it together. So what I'm going to do is set this aside where it'll stay nice and warm, waiting for us to put it on. We've got the, the butter going in the pan. Let's put in our toast. If your bread is really stale, uh, sometimes it can be very fragile, so you're going to have to be careful as you're putting it in the pan. These look done. Let's get them out of here. Here 
Here's our pan perdue, an early version of French toast. Let's give it a try. That is excellent. This topping's a little different from what you and I might expect or what we're used to. Very nice, right out of the 18th century cookbooks. Maple syrup as a topping is a perfect North American variation on that same theme. Their substitute for sugar, maple syrup. Excellent. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of 18th Century Cooking with James Townsend and Son. Be sure to watch for more episodes in the near future. Also, make sure to check out our new cooking blog, savoringthepast.net, for today's recipe, as well as other documentation and discoveries in 18th century cooking. All the clothing you've seen here today and all the cooking accessories, all these things are available in our print catalog or on our website. I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook. And I want to thank you for joining us as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century. Here's our pan perdue, an early version of French toast. Let's give it a try. That is excellent. You know, it is, it's really, mm, that is excellent. The, 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 gosh. So that's why you see maple syrup and so many different, mm, well, that was stupid. Ah, that is, that is super. This would be used as a dessert, not as a brex, breakfast. Mm, that is excellent. This topping is a little bit different than what you and I, <coughs> here, I get it stuck in my throat and I can't talk. Have you ever wondered where this comes from? I have. <laughs> <laughs>